Hello grade 11s, in this video we're going to be looking at a slightly more challenging vectors in two dimension question. If you missed the previous video where I went over vectors in two dimension and we did an easier vector question, you might want to go check that video out first because it's going to help you a lot when it comes to this question. So check the link in the description box below. But let's jump right into the more challenging question. And just so you know, there are even more challenging questions on the way, but I first need to show you the component method. So Stay tuned for that video. It may or may not already be in my vectors playlist, so go check out the vectors playlist below. So, level more challenging. We've got a person, this person's name is Mia, and according to the question, Mia walks north, then east, then south, and then she finally decides to stop and walk west. Determine her resultant displacement. Now, I hope you remember from grade 10 that displacement is a vector. Okay. It's from the starting position to the final position. Okay, It's a vector that points from the starting position towards the final position. It's change in position. So first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a diagram of the situation. And then I'm going to show you how we approach this question. It's basically the same as when we approach the, more, the easy example, example one and two. But there are a few extra steps that we need to apply before the time. Let's jump right in. Let's draw a diagram to help us represent the situation. So Mia walks 50 meters north. So here we go. She's starting here. She goes 50 meters north. I'm going to write 50 meters. Just take note, this is her starting position. Then she turns and walks 20 meters east. Just remember that it's north, east, south, west. So 20 meters east, we're going like that. Sorry, it's not straight, but you'll use a ruler. Then she walks 12 meters south. So more or less to scale. 12 meters. That's not really to scale, but you know what I mean? The 12 meters must obviously be shorter than the 50 meters. 12 meters south. So that's down. Take note how I'm drawing it head to tail every single time. Head to tail. Head to tail. Finally, she decides to stop and walk 60 meters west. Now west is basically left. So she's going 60 meters like that. Sorry, that should be straight. Let's say 60 meters. Take note that this is where she finishes. So overall, how did she walk from her starting position to her finishing her end position? If you were to draw a head to tail diagram of the entire situation, it would look like this. This would be displacement. The symbol for displacement is delta x. So I'm going to call it delta x. Right, so I drew all my vectors, head to tail, head to tail, head to tail, and my resultant, which is my displacement from the tail of the first, pointing towards the head of the last. But this looks like a mess. This doesn't look like what I had in example one and two, where I had a right angle triangle that looked something like this, you know? That's not what it looks like. But we can get from this situation to a situation where we have a single right angle triangle. That's what we're going to have to do. And in order to do that, we need to find the overall vector in the x direction and the overall vector in the y direction. I hope this makes sense. But if you think of it like this, Mia walks, we've got 20 meters to the right. What other distances are going left or right? We've got 20 meters to the right. The 12 meters is going down. I'm looking for vectors going left and right. 12 meters is going down, so it's not that one. 50 meters is going up, so it's not that one. We've got here 60 meters to the left. So we've got 60 to the left and 20 to the right. So what we're going to do is we're going to look for a direction overall in the left-right direction or the x direction. I'm going to call this resultant in the x direction. Then, I'm going to highlight that yellow, we're going to do that now. Then what we also need to do is we need to look for a resultant in the y direction. So up, down, remember y is up or down. Did she walk up or down, north or south at any given point? Yes, she did. She walked 50, me 50 meters north, up or down, and 12 meters south. There's your other up or down. I'm going to call that resultant in the y direction, our up or down direction. Now, how do we do this? We need to find a positive direction. We need to choose a positive direction. Now, grade 11s, let's focus on walk, working out resultant in the x first. 
which way makes sense for me to choose as my positive direction. Ultimately, it doesn't matter, but we walked 20 meters to the right or 20 meters east, and we walked 60 meters west. So because we walked further in the westerly direction or to the left, I'm going to choose to the west as positive or to the left as positive. So if I walked to the west, that's going to be a positive number. So I walked 60 meters to the west, so that's positive 60. And I walked 20 meters east, so it's going to be 60 minus 20. So overall, what did I do? I walked 40 sorry, meters to the west. You need to isolate your east-west and your north-south. You can do it from the story as well. You don't even need to use this diagram. She walk, walks 20 meters east, 60 meters west. So we know... 60 meters in the one direction, 20 meters in the opposite direction, we need to subtract them. 60 minus 20 gives me 40 meters west. And I'm just going to write in brackets here that that's basically to the left. What about in my y direction? Let's choose up or to the north as my positive direction. Did she walk to the north? Yes, she did. She walked 50 meters north. And because north is my positive direction, I'm going to say positive 50. And did she walk up, down in any other direction? Yes, she did. She walked 12 meters south. So it's very important to remember the following, that we always, always, always consider the left, right, or west, east. Those go together. So we either add or subtract the vectors going along this plane, like I did with the 60 and the 20, because they're going like this along the x. And then the up, down, the north, south, we also work with those together because they're along the same plane. They're along, they are along the y-axis. They are along the vertical. That's why I group those together. So let's carry on. We've got 50, but now I'm going to say minus 12. Why am I saying minus 12? I hope you can see that I'm saying 50 minus 12 because 50 is going in the positive direction. We're going north. And 12 is going down, so it's going in the negative direction, it's going south. Because it's going in the, neg in the negative direction, we have to subtract. That gives me 38 meters. But because it gives me a positive answer, I know that it's going north in the positive direction. And instead of north, I'm going to write up. Once you've worked out one answer for up or down, so we've got 38 meters up and one answer for left or right or east or west so we've got what have we got over here we've got 40 meters west then you can create your right angled triangle i hope that makes sense let's do it so let's look at our steps quickly first so it says here make sure you have the net vector in the x or the horizontal direction, which we do. We just figured out that our net vector in the horizontal direction is 40 meters west. So we've got that. And then our next step is make sure you have the net vector in the vertical direction, which we do, 38 meters north. What you can add to these steps is how we got it. So we choose a positive direction if they're going in the same direction. So say you pretend I had two vectors going to the north, we would add them. If I had two vectors going to the west, I would add them. But because in my situation, we have one going north, one going south, we subtract them. One going east, one going west, we subtract them. I hope that makes sense. So we've done step one and step two. Now that we've got a single vector going left or right, and a single vector going up or down, I hope you can see what that makes. That makes a 90 degree, 90 degree triangle. So let's draw it quickly. So we've got 40 meters to the west. Remember, west is basically left. So I'm going to draw my vector pointing like that. 40 meters west. Okay, that's my resultant in the x direction. And then I've got 38 meters north. So remember, I can't draw my north vector like this. Why not? You might say, but bam, that is pointing to the north. But remember, this is head to head. And we don't want it head to head. We want it head to tail. So my 38 
Newton vector. 38 meter vector has to go like that, head to tail. That's resultant in the y direction. Let me just move my label over here so that I can make it a bit easier for myself. Resultant in the x, that's 40 meters west. See, it's going to the west. 38 meters north or up, head to tail. So there we go, that's what it says here. Draw a head to tail diagram with the net x and the net y and draw in the resultant vector, which will be the hypotenuse. So how do I draw in the resultant? You might have to go back to my previous video or my head to tail diagram video if this is confusing you. But we start from the tail of the first, pointing towards the head of the last. I'm going to call this big R. Okay, or you can call it delta X because remember, it is displacement. It doesn't matter what you call it. This is a 90 degree triangle. And where do we put theta? Where do we put our angle? We put our angle in the corner of the triangle where there are no arrowheads. Now, you could be saying, ma'am, why do we need a theta? Remember, we are doing vectors in two dimensions. Vectors need a magnitude. We always find the magnitude when we're working with two dimensions. We find the magnitude using Pythagoras. And vectors also need a direction. In order to find the direction, we need to find the angle. So we use tan theta. So we need to include an angle on our sketch. In the next steps, I'm going to show you how to do Pythagoras and how to do tan theta. But basically, from this point onwards, this question, example three, is exactly the same as example one or two. The thing that made this example unique, that made this more difficult, was that you had to do this first. So let's do the Pythagoras, let's do the tan theta, and let's finish up this sum and get a final answer. Now what I've done over here is I'm busy doing Pythagoras. Remember, we are looking for the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is opposite the right angle, opposite the 90 degrees. Remember, I told you you can call it big R for resultant, you can call it net, but because this question is asking for displacement, the resultant vector is displacement. We know we represent displacement by using this symbol over here, change in position, triangle X, so I'm calling it that. You can call it R instead if you want to, it doesn't matter. So we're doing Pythagoras, to get the answer, we're going to square, sorry that should be a square because it's Pythagoras, we're going to square root both sides, so square root that side, get rid of the square, square root this side, and then we get our answer for our displacement. This will just be the magnitude, not the direction. Remember our steps? You use Pythagoras to work out the magnitude. We still need to do direction. So you grab your calculator, work that out quickly. So this is our magnitude, it's our amount, it's not our direction. I can round this off because this is actually part of my final answer. 55,17 meters. Now, because I'm looking for displacement, and displacement is a vector, vectors need magnitude, they also need direction. In order to find the direction, I need to use the angle, which is over here. I need to use tan theta. Now, my students ask me, ma'am, do I have to use tan? Can I use sin, sine, or cos? You may, because we just worked out the hypotenuse. But I always tell my students that you may have made a mistake over here when working out the hypotenuse. So I avoid using the hypotenuse and I work with tan because as you know, tan is opposite over adjacent. You avoid using the hypotenuse. So what is opposite that angle? Look at theta. Opposite theta is 38. Adjacent to theta is 40. So tan theta equals 38 over 40. You should know that if you're looking for an angle, you shift on your calculator. So you press shift tan, 38 over 40, and I get 43,53 degrees. Now, when stating your final answer, you can state your final answer by using the compass points, or you can state your final answer with regards to the positive x-axis. If you need a recap on how to do both of those options, because a question may require you to state a direction in a particular way, you're going to want to go check out my video on stating the direction. Um, it's linked in the description below. I'm going to do it using the compass points. So remember, the compass points look like this. North, east, south, west. 
where does this resultant vector go? Remember, this is delta x, the resultant vector. Which quadrant does it go in? It's pointing up, so it doesn't go in any of these because it's pointing up, and it points to the left, so it goes this way. If it was pointing up and to the right, then it would go here, but it's not doing that, so it goes here. Look at where theta is. Theta is over here at the bottom of the arrow, underneath the arrow, it's over here. And that angle over there is 43,53 degrees. Again, if you struggle with getting the direction, you're going to have to go watch my video on direction. But what we do is we say, look at that vector. It's going towards the north of west. So it's north of west. Of west. West goes last because it's closest to the angle. That's another way you can think of it like that. Okay, so your final answer is your displacement or Mir's displacement. Remember, displacement is delta x is 55,17 meters, 43,53 degrees north of west. Now, let's just take a look at this answer quickly. We've got our magnitude. Magnitude always comes from Pythagoras, 55,17. That's why I could round off that long number because it's part of my final answer. So you do Pythagoras to get magnitude, you do tan theta to get the angle, and then you need to use the compass points in order to get your final full direction. Now, one last thing that I wanted to mention. If you drew your diagram slightly different, let me show you what I mean. Right, so there's a lot going on at the screen at the moment, but what I want you to um, take note of is the following. First of all, the what we did on the left, that was what I did with you right now. That was our answer. What I did on the right is also an acceptable answer. This is also 100% correct. It will be considered an alternative version on the memo. So what's the difference? Let's see. Over here, my vector is going up, my re result in y. Over here, my result in y is going up, so it's the same thing. Over here, my result in x is going to the left or going west. Over here, it's going to the left or west. It's the same thing. Can you see the difference is which vector I started with? So over here, I first drew the x and then I drew the y. Over here, I first drew the y and then I drew the x. So I just drew the diagram in a slightly different order. And what ended up happening? Just take a look at the resultant. Let's do it in pink. The resultant is going in the exact same direction, up and to the left, up and to the left. So these diagrams are representing the same scenario. It just depends on which one you started with. When you do Pythagoras to get the magnitude, you get the same answer because the magnitude of the, the hypotenuse is the same. But what is different now is the angle. Look at um, where theta is on the left. Look at where theta is on the right. On the left, it's at the bottom of the line. On the right, it's on the top of the line. I hope that makes sense. When we do tan theta on the left, we go opposite over adjacent. Opposite theta is 38 over 40. Look at this theta. Opposite over here is 40 over 38. So it's the reciprocal, it's the reverse. So tan theta equals 38 over 40. Over here, remember, we got 43,53. Over here, you get 46,47. So you get a different angle, and because of that, your final statement of your coordinates will also be reversed. So over here, if you're talking about this angle, 43,53, which is over here, you're going to the north of west. If you're talking about this angle over here, which is slightly different, it's on top of the line, we're going to the west of north. This can be confusing, but I just want you guys to know that you only need to do one of these in the exam. And you choose whichever one comes more naturally to you to do. I hope that makes sense to you guys. In the next video, we will be focusing on resolving or breaking down vectors into their components and then using the component method to find the resultant vector. I'll see you in the next video.